What's up YouTube? How you doing you beautiful people? Welcome back to my channel. I'm your average Wasim and today I have a reaction video for you guys. This video was requested from one of uh, a viewer and he asked me to react to the story of the sky's toast, the Einstein of Among Us. I already know that toast is a freaking God when it comes to Among Us, so I can't wait to see this. And I don't know much about Toast, honestly. All I know is when he started streaming, he didn't have a face cam. Uh, he had a picture of Toast, basically. And then later down the road, he joined OTV. And I'm guessing when he got more confidence, he showed his face. But I can't wait to get into this video. I hope you guys like the video if you like it. Subscribe if you're new. Stick around, look through my videos. You'll probably find something that you like that you want to watch. And comment down below what you want to see me react to next. I'm down to react to basically anything. And I love reacting to gaming stuff. So just let me know. Without further ado, let's make it do what it do. And this is a long video, so I think I'm going to just talk over it. I'm going to try not to pause it so much. This is actually going to be the longest video I've done so far. The recent explosion in the popularity of social deduction party game Among Us has brought one name to the forefront of gaming online. And that name is Disguise Toast. Well played, Toast. Whatever he wins. Nah, so you're gonna vote me. Whatever he wins. Yes, it's I well am. Played. Well yes, played, I am. No, 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 no. <laughs> toast is so good. <laughs> I said I'm gonna try not to pass so much in this 30 seconds in, but anyway, all I know is Scissors is a very. Uh, if you marinate him, he'll vouch for you for no matter what. I'm sorry, Scissors. I'm so That's pepper hands, right? In the streaming world, specifically for strategy games like Hearthstone and Teamfight Tactics. By the way, uh, I am going to start streaming on Twitch. I should be getting a cam better camera later on today, so hopefully that'll be nice. And um, that's going to improve my video quality. But I'm going to be streaming on Twitch. Mostly I'm going to be playing Valorant. On the weekends, I'm probably going to be playing with my friends. During the week, I'm going to be solo queuing trying to get out, out of bronze. I'm not a very good player, but uh, I don't want to see how my journey goes. Disguise Toast has been a well-known name for many years. However, little do people know, his career as a content creator started long before streaming. Yeah, From his about. humble beginnings as a 16-year-old Flash game developer, to his present as one of huh. gaming's most recent big names. We'll be exploring all of that in today's video, the story of Disguise Toast. What's a flash developer? Jeremy Disguise Toast Wang was born on Jeremy. the 25th of November, 1991, on the small island of Taiwan. Being the youngest of three siblings, he enjoyed constant attention from his parents and older siblings. Did you wake up? Did you wake up? We're here. <laughs> Google, you do it, you do it. Yeah, be out. <laughs> I wasn't a mistake. I was just a happy accident. Before the age of one, his family moved to another island called Penang, near the coast of Malaysia, due to his father's profession as a coconut farmer. During this period, he switched periodically between attending a Chinese school and an international school, which gave him proficiency in both Chinese Mandarin and English. However, learning English in an international I did not know that he was still in two languages. Our environment created peculiarities in his speech. How much was that? Three dollar. If I make a mistake writing, hey, can I borrow some rubber? People think I'm talking about condoms. Eventually, Tosa's father grew tired of his coconut farming business. And he had just heard from his eldest son, who now studied in Canada, that people easily harvested syrup by just sticking straws into trees. With hmm. Tosa's education in the back of his mind, and the prospect of a new lucrative business in the forefront, Tosa's family moved to Kingston, Ontario, where he would spend his adolescence. 
Like many first-generation immigrant children, To struggled with the English language as well as the cultural differences of his new environment. So at lunchtime, I would sit in the corner of a hallway and quietly eat my packed lunch my mom made for me. She would make Asian food, but she's afraid that I would get made fun of because Asian food has some smell. So she would pack like what she thought was white people food. That is so sad though. He would sit in the corner of a hallway. That's so sad. Uh, yeah. To combat this, he took Game every opportunity to make new friends, joining his school's badminton and yo-yo club, as well as his grade 11 student association. Another one of his strategies was to learn magic. When it comes to magic tricks, you have to talk to people, but you have something to talk about, right? Honestly, he would have probably fit really well in with my friends. Because my friends in uh, high school were like, well, we're all immigrants, um, and we usually bef befriended people who are like us, but we're open to accept anyone. And it also helped him with his pastime of picking up girls. Eventually, he made a name for himself as the Asian Harry Potter. And the attention and praises which came That's along made him realize that deep down inside, he had a desire to be in the spotlight. Another hobby he had developed during high school was coding flash games, publishing three games in 2008 under mm. the name of Dikea on the once popular game hosting website Newsground. His first game titled The Frustration Game insulted players before making them maneuver their curses to avoid touching the walls and other obstacles. It is by far his most critically acclaimed game, Having been played over 150,000 times, even Damn. by massive YouTubers who have made videos garnering a total of 10.3 million views. The frustration game! Oh, that was easy enough. Ooh, Are you serious? serious? Why does it sound like I'm in Texas or something? <laughs> Wait, are you serious? It looks. Are you seeing that? That looks like the opening of a vagina. What the hell? <laughs> what? It sped up. What? It went backwards. It went backwards. Are you seriously doing this? Come on. I can see why it's called the frustration game. Damn, I did not know that was the OKSI. Yes, now you see me. Oh my god. Screw you, Jeremy, for creating this stupid game. <laughs> This is just broken. Look at the sensitivity in your mouth. Yeah, okay. I'll lower it then, I'll lower it. Please don't tell me I have to start all over again. No, you get to enter a code. Oh, what was that code? There was no code. Oh my god! <laughs> he switched up the genre with his second game, Origami as he had players play as an origami bird flying through the plane of Mordor while avoiding fireballs and red paper dragons. His third game was the much anticipated sequel to his first, The Frustration Game 2, which introduced players to new mechanics as well as more challenging courses. Disguised Toast would go on to create two more games in the Frustration series, with his third cited as his worst due to poor art quality and his final being a ruthless attempt at capitalizing on Christmas. Tosa's career as a 16-year-old flash game developer was surprisingly profitable as he had received an offer of $1,000 for the rights to his frustration game series and the money he later used to buy his family a new TV. Alright, I made $1,000. That cost $1,000. It writes itself. This favorable experience with coding and making games would later he guide knows? his future decision after graduation to study at the University of Waterloo. World famous for having the biggest nerds on the continent. And he was no exception as he majored in computer science where females are even more rare than the extinct dodo <laughs> bird. And he also spent his summers working on apps for major companies such as Mercedes-Benz, the NFL and even the Royal Bank of Canada where he was caught embezzling millions of dollars to help grow his father's maple syrup business. Toast also worked on the once popular mobile game Farmvale, where kids were tricked into spending money in order to milk virtual cows and harvest pixels. 
However, the greatest piece of content from his university years has to be his role in reality YouTube series Next36, where 70 young entrepreneurs battle it out for one of the 36 spots in an elite startup mentorship program. These applicants are hungry, ambitious. I've been doing push-ups every day since I'm 16. Did I write that in there? Much is given to Next36, but in return, much is expected. Failing is a good thing, because the only thing worse than failing is not trying. Throughout the selection process, Toast was only seen browsing Reddit on his phone, and this didn't go unnoticed by the judges. I gave him a 2, he's the only guy I gave a 2 to. 2 is pretty bad. He was pathetic. <laughs> what? Was he worse than the other guy? He will never be an entrepreneur. However, We probably made some mistakes. Thus, with a pen in his mouth and another man in his embrace, <laughs> he successfully obtained a spot as the huh. next 36. <laughs> After 9 months, Toast completed the program and returned as the co-founder of Pirate Studios. We were a mobile gaming startup and the first product we made was this wait, wait, hold, hold up, hold up. We're a mobile game. Temple Run, Angry Birds, Fruit, Fruit Slice? Whatever, um, damn, okay. We start up and the first product we made was this um, zombie apocalypse simulator. I want to thank Jeremy for sharing their wisdom with us today. And the other date to share with you is September the 13th and 14th when we will be having our first ever hackathon. This news of a hackathon seemed to have piqued his interest because in the following year, Toast became a finalist in Hack the North where he taped an iPhone to his face and said, I am the Silicon Man. I am Iron Man's out of work cousin. Operated with the swag glove, Silicon Man can provide light. If I'm ever in the dark or I get too scared, just turn on the flashlight. Entertainment. You can also jam out to it. You just go ahead and make that rock and roll sign and. What else? Has an advanced AI. His name's Whitman, so let's give it a try. Reminder buy some milk. I will remind you to buy some milk. And even a feature for Kumas. Ooh, what's up? What is going on? What is going on? Okay. <laughs> After four years, Toast graduated from Waterloo. However, cool. he had only received a three-year degree because during his third year, he had dropped out of computer science. Yeah, I couldn't do the full program. I would fail so much questions about big O notation. What's the computing time kind of deal? Oh, like, I don't know. But that front end though. He later changed his major to math, but once again, he found it too difficult. I got a 40% on my midterm. I got 20% on the last assignment. It's not possible. Oh, here's my recurring nightmare. I'm failing all my classes and I'm not gonna graduate. Even though I'm a streamer now, just last week, I remember this. So he instead settled mm. for a three-year degree, which he found out wouldn't be sufficient for his goal of working for a US tech company where he could exploit free food and other benefits. With his future in limbo, Toast didn't really know what to do. Until one day, on the 11th of March 2014, Blizzard released their digital card game, Hearthstone. And with it, the online personality we know today, this guy's Toast was born. I first got started was my brother when Hearthstone was announced. He was very excited because he was also a big Magic the Gathering fan, which is the card okay. game. And he wanted to make a fan site for it. He would ask me if I could help him out by making content for it. Thus, under the influence of his older brother, Toast began creating content for Hearthstone. But first, he needed to pick a name. This guy's Toast, how did you come up with that name? So in Hearthstone, we have a card called SI7 Agent. And when you play this card, he says, Ha, <laughs> this guy's Toast. Wait, why is he saying disguised Toast? Is he talking about a piece of toast that's like hidden or something? <laughs> oh, I didn't get that. Now that you've explained it to me, I'm kind of bummed. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Adopting the name and this logo, Toast began creating content in the form of infographics, which provided simple and easy to digest information about popular Hearthstone decks, as well as tournament results. 
He would share these on both Reddit and the popular Hearthstone forum Hearthpoon, where he would receive very positive feedback, and slowly build a name for himself. Toast continued creating infographics for a while, but he soon realized that they had relatively short shelf lives. I mean, with most Reddit posts, you post it, it's on the front page for a day, and it fades away. He also couldn't financially support himself through these posts. Therefore, on the 8th of April 2015, he decided to start a YouTube channel. Okay, so he started as a YouTuber. He then fully dedicated himself to creating a wide variety of Hearthstone content, from videos about card lore and interactions, to quizzes, and even analysis of professional players in tournaments. Hmm. However, despite the success of his videos, he was afraid that one day the Hearthstone content well would run dry. I knew I was going to run out of content, there's only so much cards to talk about, there's only so much bugs to talk about. Seeking infinite content, he eventually came to the conclusion that the only solution was to become a streamer himself. Streaming did not come naturally for Toast. He was not only insecure about his appearance, but also afraid that his real life friends would have negative perceptions of him if they found out. He started out streaming for 50 viewers, wearing his logo as a mask, and remained uncertain of his prospect as a successful streamer. However, on August 2016, while streaming one day, he accidentally tugged on his webcam cord, tilting the camera slightly, and for the first time ever, his real face appeared on stream. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god, you guys just saw my face! Ah! No! His 600 viewers at the time were ecstatic due to the incident, but their restless energy soon faded after Toast had fixed his mask and laughed it off. Everything seemed normal again. However, that was far from the truth. Because what Toast hadn't noticed was that the snitches had already began making their moves. After the incident, Toast started to receive threats that if a compensation wasn't paid, the world would know of his secret. Nevertheless, he That's decided to just ignore them. And one day, after multiple Reddit posts and uploads to YouTube, a snitch finally forced Toast's hands. He raised it up high, <laughs> as if to deliver the final blow. <sighs> but what came down was not a slap with a. That's funny. That animation was copyright really strike, since it was a direct rip from his stream but instead, the hand of mercy, because Toast had seen 9 years worth of content on his channel. In the end, he opted to 